used to make these horses, endless belt, artificial vessels, you know, 3D textiles. There are many products which can be produced only by subtle loom. You cannot produce using any subtle loom for these purposes. And that's why since technical textile is growing, there are many technical textile items which can only be produced by subtle loom, not the subtle loom. That, why, that is why it reappeared. The second reason why subtle loom again reappeared is the salvage we produce in subtle loom, there is a wastage of waved yarn. And when we produce a technical textile using carbon fiber, Kevlar fiber, you know, the cotton yarn is 200 rupees kilo. The carbon fiber is about 12,000 rupees per kilo. Kevlar fiber is about 10,000 rupees kilo. You can imagine if you waste even 1% waste, 2% waste, there is a huge waste to the cost of production. So subtle loom, which forms bound salvage, neat salvage, there is no wastage of waved yarn. That's why the subtle loom again reappeared in international market, particularly to take care of production of many technical textiles. And the last point in the favor of subtle loom is, it's a very good combination of sample weaving. Nowadays, industry, almost all leading industry, they are producing fast samples in their product development department. We don't have any sample weaving machine using high-tech subtle weaving. So subtle loom is one of the solution where you can produce or have a low width subtle loom and at a slow speed you can attach with a sample warper and even sample sizer also and you can produce this fabric. So summarizing what I said so far. We Weaving till death. This is the summary of weaving so far. Now enter to my subject, 3D weaving. I will be discussing these five points in 3D weaving. First, reviewing basics of 3D, what exactly 3D is. Actually, I am not discussing what research we are doing in IIT in the 3D, which will be too much for the people who are sitting here to really understand. Just I'm giving the concept, what is the basics, fundamentals about the 3D weaving. So basics is, if you look at what is the journey of innovation in textile. We started producing innovation textiles, my first, if you recall, what was the fabric 12,000 years ago? It was a basic need. Then textile dominated with tradition and culture. Then textile industry dominated with fashion. Today, we are looking at functionality. Every fabric must have certain functionality to produce a new product. But where from this weaving concept came? The weaving concept came from this tiny insect. Look at this gentleman. I call him master weaver. He is the master weaver. Why he is master weaver? I have given some fabric samples in the right hand side you can see here, which is based on produced using polar weaving and spiral weaving concept. In case of 3D weaving, we are still struggling to make a machine which can produce the fabric as you see here. Yet to produce a weaving machine which can produce this structure. The bottom one you can see, which is a 3D fabric produced by one company in USA, Bally Ribbon, which is used to make aircraft door and window, which is produced based on this technology, the technology which uses used by this tiny insect. It's called spiral and polar weaving technique. What is lacking in weaving? That is conventional 2D weaving. Let us first give a thought to its structure. A weaving where we use a warp yarn and weft yarn, the structure is produced because of the friction between warp and weft yarn. And also there is a crimp in the warp and weft yarn. This is what all about precisely what a woven fabric is. If you really look at micro level, what you will find, the woven structure, all the yarns remain in one plane. Yarn could be in one direction, two direction, or three direction, or multi-direction. So the fabric is monoaxial fabric, biaxial fabric, triaxial fabric, and multi-axial fabric. So this is uniaxial fabric, biaxial fabric, triaxial fabric, and multi-axial fabric. We classify the fabric also based on dimension. What is dimension? 
the fabric in warp and wave direction, the first one is called 2D fabric. We have a yarn also in which a constituent yarn disposed in two mutually perpendicular plane. Example is our terry towel. The convention in textile we call all pile fabric as 2.5D fabric. And finally now we are talking a 3D fabric means the yarns are in three different plane, X plane, Y plane and Z plane. That is what 3D fabric. So if you take a combination of these dimension and axis, then probably you can produce numerous structure in weaving. Look at x-axis, mono-axis, bi-axis, tri-axis, multi-axis. Look at y-axis, 1D, 2D, 3D. If you combine axis with dimension, you can produce enormous structure. Look at the structure which is there in bottom two rows. They all represent 3D structures. This is how the basis of making a 3D fabric, arranging yarn in three planes, combining the effect of axis and planar, that is dimension. First question arises, what is missing in 2D? Why are you interested in 3D? The reason is, if you look at the 2D structure, what you will find, it is a very thin fabric because the thickness of the fabric is simply the sum total of a diameter of two yarns. And if you want to have a thick fabric, the only alternative is you have to go for stitching, multi-layer fabric, or you have to use some adhesive to laminate to make a thick structure. That is the main drawback. The other drawback of this 3D, 2D fabric is if you try to measure the properties of the fabric, it is good only in warp and wave direction. The properties in thickness direction, that is jet plane, is completely missing. There are certain applications where we need some mechanical properties also in z-axis. That was another need. There are many other limitations. All 2D fabrics are anisotropic. The properties are only in warp and weft. In z, there is no properties. To get rid of this anisotropy, we developed multi-axial weaving, where the yarns are in different plane, different axis. The third drawback of 2D fabric is poor in-plane shear resistance. If you analyze the woven structure, the crossover point of warp and weft, they are just sitting over, they are not welded. So when you apply a tangential force in a fabric, the yarn rotates. That means the shear strength of the fabric is very poor. To have shear strength in the fabric, the technology was developed tri-axial weaving. You can see the interlacement point, there is very little chance of a rotation of yarn at the crossover points. So, shear strength is high. The next drawback of 2D structure is the modulus of the fabric is less than the modulus of fiber and yarn. This is primarily due to the crimp present in the yarn because every warp and web has some crimp in 2D weaving. To get rid of this problem, we developed 3D fabric. Have a look to this structure. The yarns are in X, Y, Z. No interlacing or crimp, so the modulus is high, you can have a fiber bloom fraction as high as 55 or even 60. And the inspiration which came from nature, you know all the developments in science and technology came from nature only. We made aircraft looking birds flying, we made sheep looking fish are swimming, we make weaving looks the spider web makes its web. We learn from this tiny bar, what is 3D fabric? Look at the structure this tiny bar has made, is thick, multi-layer, it is hollow, light in weight, it is cellular, protective, it is in your net shape, absolutely brilliant. Look at this structure, absolutely brilliant. If this tiny bar can make this structure, why we cannot develop this structure by technology? and that inspire us to make 3D fabric. So the basic definition of 3D fabric is a fabric which has substantial thickness. And how we achieve this thickness is just, see, in a normal fabric, the thickness of the fabric is only twice of a diameter of yarn, or slightly higher than twice of the diameter of the yarn. Whereas in a 3D fabric, see some samples are there, 
the thickness of the fabric is much, much higher than the twice of the diameter of the fabric. The fabric, this technology started with one US patent, 1992. And all of us, those who are in textile, must be acquainted with this gentleman. We have all read in our BTEC time a fab weaving book, Conversion of Yarn to Fabric by Lord and Mohammed. He is the gentleman, Professor M. H. Mohammed, who is a retired professor in North Carolina State University, came with this patent first. The second patent came, which is very, very established in 1997. I will show this machine afterwards. Is known by Indian, Dr. Nandan Koker, who is working in Sweden. He is now settled in Sweden. His patent, again, a Sweden patent, 509-944. And after that, as of today, if you search, more than 100 patents are there in 3D weaving. You can produce 3D fabric not only by weaving, by knitting, by braiding, by none of one. You can see some pictures. Basically, 3D weaving means the fabric with substantial thickness. And the question is, you can have a 3D fabric in many form. Look at some of the samples. These are all the samples which are developed in IIT lab. You can see some 3D fabric of spacer fabric, airfoil structures, profile structures. I will give a little bit more idea about all these structures, not really complete description of this fabric, but you will definitely have some idea what all these structures here. So this is some of the, if you try to classify the 3D weaving, it can be classified like this. In 3D, you can make solid structure, hollow structure, nodal structure, and send cell structure. Just have a look to the picture, you can understand what is a solid structure is. They are all multi-layer fabrics. What is a hollow spacer fabric is? Hollow spacer is called spacer fabric or distance fabric. You will get a very detailed discussion how this technology is developed by Professor Baslavik in the fourth presentation of just in this session. He has developed a very fantastic technology. He will describe you about this spacer fabric. This spacer can be broadly classified into two. One could be very simple spacer hollow fabric, and it could be a very, very complex hollow fabric. The samples which you see here, these are real fabric, and most of them are developed in IIT Delhi lab. This is another spacer fabric, which is called honeycomb. It's an excellent textile structure used to make lightweight, high-impact resistance composite material, which is used in aerospace applications. Another 3D structure is called profile structure. The profile structure could be of any shape, as you see here, only few examples. I'll show you some of the more examples later, you know, which we have developed in our lab. It could be L-shape, pi-shape, plus-shape, U-shape, you know, many shapes you can produce. These structures are used particularly in structural composite as machine components. So, in all these, what exact benefit we get out of this technology is you can have a fabric which can be converted to structural composite, which is light in weight, highly durable, and the performance of this composite is much, much better than any metallic counterpart. Apart from this, we get the benefit of corrosion resistance, we get the benefit of lightweight, we get the benefit of many structural advantages, which I will summarize later. So, if you classify all these 3D structures developed so far, can be classified into 3D solid, 3D hollow, 3D cell, 3D nodal, 3D profiled. As I said, if you try to discuss all these in detail, there is endless. Each subject is very, very wide. I will only show you examples of this so that you can imagine what these structures are. 3D solid structure looks like this. They are basically multi-layer fabrics. If you go to spacer fabric, spacer fabric of any type, you know, hollow spacer is one and the same thing. Then the special structure is cell structure and nodal structure. This is spacer fabric. The samples you see in top is developed in IIT lab only. This is a cell fabric which is used for protection and security purposes. This is nodal structure which is used in aircraft. This is a profile structure. All the samples you see here in this slide, they are all developed in IIT Delhi lab. This is pi structure, you know, H structure, L structure, any structure you can produce. 
So this is about only brief what all structures you can develop in 3D weaving. Now let us have a brief outlook about how you produce it. What is the machinery used it briefly? Honestly speaking, if you try to produce a 3D fabric, there are various manufacturing processes for the interlacement of yarn. There is no such fixed technology which can be produced all the fabrics. The machine purely depends on what is your product. So all these 3D weaving machines are highly product specific. But nevertheless, as I said, 3D fabric not only can be produced by weaving, you can produce by knitting, you can produce by braiding, you can produce by none of one, but depends what is the application. Question is, when we didn't have 3D technology, how we are using or how we are meeting that purpose? The purpose we are meeting by this, stitching. We take different number of layers. For example, today, the bulletproof jacket we are producing, about 20 to 30 layers of Kevlar 2D fabric are being stitched soon and used as a bulletproof jacket. But today, you can use 3D fabric to make this bulletproof jacket. But the drawback of when you use this multi-layer fabric by stitching or by adhesives, then what happens when any impact force acts on this, this structure delaminates. It's not an integrated structure. The structure will delaminate. That's why 3D fabric comes to really risk. 3D fabric is nothing new. This is also 3D fabric, which is nothing but the simple velvet weaving principle. We Use this. This velvet weaving is about 150 years old technology. Where we, if you cut the fabric from the center, you will find velvet in a four fabric. This is also a kind of 3D fabric. But the 3D fabric which we are talking about, which is used for structural composite, is not this 3D fabric. The first machine of 3D fabric was developed in China. This is the oldest one, no more. But the trial was taken. Then some technology came, which is called 3D. There was a company, US based, so they were producing these fabrics. This, what you can see here, a cell structure using differential takeoff mechanism on the loom. This fabric was produced. In fact, in this, we classify this 3D weaving into two categories interlaced 3D fabric, non interlaced 3D fabric. What is interlaced 3D fabric? Interlaced 3D fabric means this is an interlaced 3D fabric, means multi layer of warp and weft yarn provided the fabric. Remember, when I am saying, when I am saying 3D fabric means three on weaving system, it could be either two warp, one weft, or one warp, two weft, both the way. When we use two warp, one weft, what will be the machine? When we use two weft, one warp, what will be the machine and technology? I will follow later in. Look at here. This is a 3D fabric. Most of the research now is taking place based on this, where it is called non-interlaced 3D fabric weaving. Here, what we do is a multi-layer warp in Z direction. You can see the warp which is coming from this blue one is called, which is placed in the oven structure in the Z direction, in thickness direction. And the other yarn, that is red yarn, another warp, which we call stuffer yarn, and the dots which present weft yarn, that is in Y axis. This is how the 3D fabric is made. There is also a technological noobing. It is nothing but just to have a confusion, difference between weaving. Because when 3D woven fabric was developed, because there was no interlacement, so people were saying there is no interlacement, means it cannot be said as a woven fabric. So noobing what was introduced because there was no interlacement, because you can see here there is no interlacement. All the three yarn passes in the structure straight. So this noobing term was introduced to just get rid of this confusion. Look at this message. five minutes more which is 3D weaving, was developed in USA in Professor Seum's lab. He was supposed to deliver this lecture today on weaving, but unfortunately, he was held up in USA. There is a huge storm today in last night in USA. All the flights were canceled. He's held up on the way. This is a 3D weaving system we are using in IIT. You can see here, the yarn is coming from two warp beams. We have also developed another 3D weaving machine which is, produ which is producing the spacer fabric. This is a loom which is developed in our lab only. And we produce different spacer structure. This is another weaving technology which is developed, the krill fed weaving. We are 
now in fact producing this machine. It is on the process. Almost in another two months, this machine will be ready. The design, there is one manufacturer in Ahmedabad who is taking our design, producing this machine. It will be ready in another two months. This is the same machine which produces these structures. This is what the fabric or technology developed by Nandan Koker. This is called a dual shading mechanism. Have a look to this structure. You can have a better look in this. This weaving technology has two different shades. One shade is horizontal, another shade is vertical. That means we are inserting two weft, only one warp. The red dots in this diagram shows warp yarn, and the blue and green shows warp yarn. This is called dual shading 3D weaving machine. And by this, you produce this fabric. The last but not the least, this is a machine developed in this year, 2018 by Dernier, first commercial 3D weaving machine really in the world to be used and it is yet to be really work in the industry. In IIT, we tried to get the quotation from this company and you will be scared to see the figure what this machine cost is. Anybody can guess what will be the cost of this machine, this weaving machine? Six crores, two crores to 50 crores. The educational institution quotation by Dernier to IIT is 14 crores rupees. One weaving machine, 14 crores rupees. Okay, chairman said only five minutes. We are already delayed. I'll quickly have a grasp. What is the properties of this fabric? We don't get any benefit in terms of strength of this technology. It has some other applications. If you look at the load elongation curve of this fabric, it is completely different from the conventional 2D oven fabric. In 2D oven fabric, we have a decrimping zone. Since there is no crimp in this yarn, so there is no decrimping zone in the load elongation curve of this fabric. Textile students can only understand this concept. It has a very good compressive properties. The fabric gives excellent impact resistance. Look at this. When similar bullet is given to these fabrics, the last one is called 3D fabric, the bottom three. You know, in the top three, 2D fabric, where the bullet makes a hole. The top, the bottom three, bullet could not make the hole under the identical condition. It has a high impact resistance. The fabric is used for cut resistance also, knife penetration resistance. So you can see here in that diagram, 3D fabric has excellent knife penetration resistance. When we make composite material, and try to test the composite for its tensile properties. The beauty of this is when this composite break in case of 3D fabric, look at what is the nature of break. There is a sharp edge break in one straight line. That means the stress distribution in this structure is completely uniform because the structure is stable. But if you try with this 2D fabric, see how the break takes place. If you try with UD fabric, see how the structure splits. So that is what the advantage of this structure. If you bend this 3D fabric in its composite form, you will find a lot of delamination. This transparent white portion shows the delamination tendency. And you can see from this diagram, if it is 3D, there is a delamination. If it is 2D, there is no delamination. So delamination is another strength of this technology. You can produce different weave also in this. We produce 3D fabric using plain, we mat with, you can produce twill with this structure, you can produce satin with this structure, you can produce interlocks in this structure, even in interlock you can have plain, you can twill and you can satin. So many structures you can produce and when you try to measure its properties, what you'll find, the properties in fact enhances exactly in proportion with what is the total number of interlacement points in the structure. And if you look at this curve, what it, in x-axis, it is the crossover points in the fabric, y-axis is the impact energy absorption capacity. As the number of interlacement points in the structure increases, the impact resistance capacity of this fabric increases substantially. Another advantage of the structure is it gives ductile structure. And what is the utility of ductile? Because of this ductility, this structure is used to 
be used in building for earthquake resistance building. Any material which is highly ductile is a useful material to make building because during earthquake, because of the high acceleration, the structure bends. 3D fabric prevents this. When you produce special fabric using this, the energy absorption capacity of this structure is very, very high. If you produce the special fabric of this nature, if you produce special fabric of this nature, and when they are com com you know, converted to composite material like this, what you will find, the energy absorption capacity of this structure is very, very excellent. That's why it is used any application in composite where the energy absorption capacity is very, very high. The applications includes aerospace, automobile, marine, and many more in sports, etc. So skipping, this is another application. It is, look at this, when you make this structure by mechanical engineering using metals, we go for this. We use, you can produce textile structure of this type, these are all profile structure, which can really substitute this fabric. These are all textile structure which can be used. Look at this. This is a T structure by weaving, 3D weaving, and when you try to measure the junction strength of this T structure, junction strength is very, very high compared to conventional structure. So many. When you look at the near net shape advantage, if you produce the fabric using 3D profile structure, look at how this fixation in the machine components will do. If you use normal structure, look at, it will not fit in that. There is a curve, there will be a gap. So that is the advantage of this structure. There are many examples in this. I have already told this. If it is a conventional composite of multi-layer, when it is subjected to impact force, there will be delamination. If you are using 3D structures, this delamination problem will not come. This structure is highly formable. So this is a formability test. And now you have to wind up. As you go on changing the structure, you will find the formability increases. We also produce many 3D structures of stiffeners. These are all the stiffeners which I am showing are developed in IIT by our lab. These are all stiffener structures which is applied in construction material. This is one of the wonderful applications of the 3D fabric where the airfoil structure for aircraft wing, for wind turbine blade, you can produce using this structure. So I'm just showing some of the structures which are developed in IIT, aircraft wing prototype. Skipping just only one minute more. 3D structures are used in these areas. Just to have a look, some diagram. It is used in automobiles, in aerospace, in marine, in civil engineering, in machine components, in structural engineering, even in pressure vessels, in sports, in wind turbine blade, in ballistic protection jacket, ballistic helmet, ballistic shoes, anti-riot shield, hardened shelter used by military people, substitution of conventional tent, even blast resistance building. This is a 3D structure made composite material used to make this building. This is lightweight vehicle armor. This vehicle, the photograph taken from US military during Iraq war. So this is a completely blast resistance vehicle. The top of the marine sea, that is superstructure made of special fabric, and many more applications. Sorry, I included weaving and this part. That's why the material was enormous. I will straight away. This is another project which we have now taken up, application of. Uh, 3D fabric for automotive applications. We have right now two PhD students working in this area, how 3D structures can be used to make car. And there is a science to this, which I'm skipping. There is a huge challenge in this. The challenge is design, the challenge is weaving, the challenge is converting them into composites. Okay. So 
Today, as if you look at the technical textile industry in India, confined to small sector, less practical experience, skilled innovations, you know, is not really available. There is a cultural challenge also in this country. Because to make this technology, you need a lot of computing knowledge, you need a lot of modeling knowledge, and textile people have to learn this and use this technology to develop this. OK, uh, coming to last interesting slide, there is a concept of 4D textile also nowadays. I don't have time. There is a lot of information in this. Even 4D textile is now. There is a huge wish list now in weaving development. These are some of the projects which are listed going on in different parts of the world, in different research institutes, the developments which are expected to come by 2030. So it is listed, I am not, don't time, I don't have time to really explain, but by 2030, these all technologies are expected to come to industry. Thank you very much. So we have a focus incubation center supported by Ministry of Textiles in IIT Delhi. All these developments work are taking place in this center. The basic purpose of this focus incubation center is we want to really network with industry and also in foreign research institutions. Thank you very much for your patience here. Thank you, Professor Bera. Textile is no more what we are wearing. Textile is giving, taking a different direction. Weaving is no more what we have been taught or what is being taught. So now weaving is different, and industry has to take note of it. With this, that I'm thankful to uh, uh, Professor Bera. I will only take two questions, because uh, again, that uh, I have to uh, take care of uh, the time. Yes, Kaushik. Oh no, sorry, it's wrong. I, I never said commercially there is, a, there is now a lot of manufacturers which are producing, not in India, but you know, I tell the Nandan Coker, which is an Indian, settled in USA, sorry, Sweden, he is selling 3D fabric to Boeing company. He is producing. For yes, for protective textile also. It is not selling in India. This development is there, where the development? We don't have any development, we don't have any innovation. You tell me, any field in India, there is an innovation. You take any field. I'm talking about Python, I'm talking about anywhere. They are not producing or selling. I think that we will take only question, not discussion. Huh. Yeah, please. Your next question, please. Yes. Chick, chick. Yes. Commercially viable? Yes, commercially viable. This technology is already established by a company. It's called Safe Weaving in USA. And this company was supported by Professor Mohammed. He is from North Carolina State University. <laughs> he had his own company. The company is closed now because the person is very too old now. He is retired. But this company was producing. OK, Professor Th Bera, thank you very much. And we will have uh, more time during uh, lunch also. So Bera will be available. We can talk. Now that uh, I will invite another uh, topic, is a very, uh, a this area which everybody knows, that is uh, a lot of work is going on in nanotechnology. And this, uh, uh, your talk will be by Professor Militsky uh, from uh, Technical University Libres. Professor Milky, his, uh, India is his second house. That you will find that every other native months that he is in India. He loves India. And now that I will invite uh, Professor Maritsky. Professor Maritsky has a very wide experience because I, once I was a student uh, that uh, I know him as a statistician. He was working in area of statistics. From 80th forward that he has moved to a different direction. He has uh, taken a lot of uh, this administrative responsibility in technical university. And today I'm sure none of the textile students in the world that who doesn't know Professor Militsky. So I will invite uh, Professor Militsky for his uh, uh, second talk, which is on nanotechnology in textile. Dr. Stiak, sorry to intervene. Before uh, we close, 
I would request you to kindly hand over a memento to Professor Behra. But this assignment was request... not told to me, so that I, I take the responsibility of this. Uh, uh, okay, I will also down. request Mr. Rajiv Pandey of Perf. These are uh, active wear manufacturers to to give the gift hamper to Professor Behra. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am second speaker in morning session, therefore it is a very good opportunity for me to be quicker. I will try a little bit. Uh -huh. Why is no connection with? Uh -huh. Yeah. I will try to be a little bit not standard, because standard is our future is bright. We know everything. We only waiting for application in industry. Everything was uh, possible to be invited. Uh, where everything was uh, uh, or is ready, only industry are uh, necessary for realization. My vision is it is not so good and we are in a little bit special situation because we are, in fact, following newspaper stories. Some writers are saying nanotechnology is our future. We are following, yeah, yeah, it is. Some newspaper story is uh, nanofibers are the best according to relative surface area. Some newspaper uh, writers are saying uh, Nano materials are very strong, therefore could be used for reinforcing some composites. All these are well known, everybody is following that. And I will try to show you it is not so true as looks, and in some cases you should have some necessity to discuss not only about benefits, but about some shortage, because something will be 100% not be able to be covered. So for 100% we will be no sitting being caught by nano fibers and uh, being, if we will be, we will be naked 100%. Therefore, you can see it is not so simple. Therefore, first of all, necessary to say what it is. We are as in situation as some connection between Mars and between Venus. Mars is strong, Bar Mars is showing what are ways further and something like that. Venus is to some uh, extent following him, but after some time saying it is not so everything good as looks, and therefore it is necessary to have a something as a being uh, not so optimistic to follow him. Therefore, from my point of view, scientists are from Mars, and engineers or industry people are Venus. Because in, uh, industry people are following, scientists think, yeah, yeah, it is good. After some time, it is not so good, therefore it's withdrawn or stopping. After some time, it's, it's some, another one is good. Therefore, necessary to say it is good to have uh, something as uh, information from both sides and information not only from positive ones, but as well from negative. And that's big difference between some publications from the past and uh, today. In the past, majority of the publications were comprehensive, saying what is durability, what is aging, what is influence of some uh, uh, moisture, temperature, and that. Now it is positive, 100% it is positive, but only in labs in climatized conditions. Therefore, we can see there are a little bit misinterpretation, and majority of people are focused to some positive sides and nobody is saying what is negative or what is reality. So therefore, that's typical in uh, nanomaterials and uh, nanotechnologies. Uh, there are still some 
point necessary to be solved. There are still some, still some weak points. And we can see here a list of necessities saying what it is in plenty of nano effects is only on nano level. Therefore, for real application, it's not so good. There are some durability problems. There are some temporary effects. Therefore, plenty of deaths are still not fully mature for application in industry. If something is possible to be applied in industry, it is applied without discussion. For example, majority of ladies facial creams are with nanoparticles. But no lady is saying I am covered by nanoparticles because for them it is not necessary to have this kind of promotion. Therefore, we can see in cosmetics, application of nanotechnology is very simple. Majority of us are using that one in some creams without discussion because it is not beneficial. If you will have that one, they will be saying for ladies is no benefit. But from point of industry, if you will be saying I have some nano, you are some in better position, more competitive. Therefore, that's one reason for that. Uh, second is some uh, materials are not uh, oriented to some limitations and therefore I will try to show you only three myths according to nanotechnology and after then discussing some applications on nanotechnology from our group being able to be used in reality because they are not so complicated. Therefore, first of all, we can see according to textile we could have uh, nanofibers, we could have uh, some nano voids in the fibers, we could have uh, some corrugation on the surface, therefore some application about nano coating or nano covering, we could have uh, some uh, kind of nano porous structures, therefore in fact in textile we have uh, plenty of possibilities how to adopt something in nano. Strictly speaking, if you will be ironing your polyester uh, material, you will make uh, some changes in internal structure on the level of nano as well. <laughs> Therefore, you can see it is in fact uh, accompanying textile structure because polymeric chains, uh, crystallinity and that's are in, in, on the bridge between micron and nano. Therefore, uh, necessary to say not only it is nano, but what is beneficial in, in that scale. When we will continuing, what is a little bit trouble with nano in textile? One big trouble is thickness. We cannot create arbitrary thick material. Looks like, why not? But if we'll be discussing about some kind of woven fabrics, we have uh, some, uh, in that picture it's possible to see, thickness is from 0.3 to 0.8 uh, uh, millimeters only. Because it depends on the thickness of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, constitutive yarns. Therefore, we can go over. We can a little bit enlarge it, but not to a very huge extent. We will be discussing ago about nanolayer. Simple nanolayer is approximately some uh, kind of uh, microns. Therefore, we can see there are, if we'll be creating something bigger, it is possible, but it will be another layer. So we are layering that. And in that case, will be some troubles with arrangement of that layer. Therefore, it is not so simple to say it is that. And in some micro membranes, we could have uh, some uh, uh, tens of micron thickness as well. And then thickness is very important because in different thickness, we have different GSM. We can see in nano, we have GSM approximately one, two, three, four uh, uh, gram per meter uh, square. In case of micron, we could have uh, till 100. In reality, you could have some hundreds till some approximately 1,000 if you have a uh, thicker uh, non woven structure. And that limitation is very serious because we are discussing, for example, about surface area. Surface area divided by mass. In that case, it's simple. It's beneficial for nano because in nano, the unit of mass is very wide area of material. Therefore, in fact, if you'll be discussing not about mass, but about area, because in some applications on our body, on filtration and that, we are discussing not about mass, but about area. And if you'll be using another characteristics, uh, some uh, surface area per uh, micro area of materials, we'll be obtaining quite different picture, I will show you it. Therefore, we can see thickness is very important to be discussed because we have a limitation. We can, in metallic industry, they could create arbitrary thick materials. For them is nothing, therefore they should use some relative per mass. Here, as I said, we have uh, serious limitations about thickness of materials. 
And now we, I will start with some benefit of nano. 100% we have uh, some size effects. We, have, we will have uh, some motion, uh, like Brownian motion. We have a very small sedimentation or settling velocity. If somebody will be saying you, I have nano, you can create dispersion and waiting. If will be settlement f during 15 minutes, it is no nano. Therefore, it's very simple to uh, unhide if it is micron or nano. Therefore, we can see that benefits are very good because some effects are more durable. Uh, in nano, what is good is majority of atoms are on the surface. Therefore, if we have uh, some reactions on the interface, we, are, we have a benefit from that because majority of atoms are part of the reaction. If you have uh, materials in microns, only some tens or less than ten are on the surface. Therefore, majority is passive. There are only for being, not for reaction. Therefore, you can see in some cases it's very beneficial for nano. We are using a higher portion of materials for some activities. Therefore, that's positive. Another one is we can see here about size and color. Gold is probably for everybody known. And we can see if you will give to your girlfriend, uh, girlfriend some uh, atomic color will be invisible. <laughs> Therefore, and the color will be uh, in fact white. If you will give her some cluster, will be orange, but not metallic. If you will create some particles, will be as well not gold, uh, gold shade. Only in some foil, we, we have a typical uh, color of gold. So we can see that size effect is visible and could be used with some benefits for some dyeing and other purposes as well, because we can change particle size, and then based on that, we can change, uh, change shade via the same technology. Therefore, that's something beneficial. And here there are some discussions according some different behavior between small and uh, uh, big microsystem. I will show you some examples in next slides. Therefore, if we'll be discussing about nano, as I said, this high relative area, surface area, looks very good because it's extreme. But I explained to you, it is uh, possible to be used if we are able to work with, with bulk. And as I said, textile material is limited according to this bulk because we have a limited thickness. Therefore, I will show you that results uh, later. Second is some kind of quantum effects. Therefore, there are some uh, similarities between behavior of uh, individual molecules and these uh, nanomaterials. Uh, high surface energy reactivity 100%. Uh, usually better thermal uh, and electrical conductivity. What is uh, probably necessary to say, weak cohesion. Therefore, cohesion is joining all, uh, all particle in some volume. Therefore, from that point of view, something as a, a strength and that, that properties are not so good, especially in the nano world. Some higher bioactivity for some medical could be good. For people or consumers could be negative because it depends what is bio in that case. Low strength, as I was discussing. And we can see on that corner some uh, example from uh, Australia, they created some silver particles with different, uh, only uh, different size and different shape, and they obtain, in fact, very wide uh, range of uh, different shades based only on the size. Therefore, we can see it is a little bit promising. That materials are antimicrobial, that materials are a little bit electrically conductive, therefore looks very good and they found there are some forces between wool and silver for uh, fixation of that on, on the surface. It looks very good. Only question is, dyeing via silver is a little bit costly, therefore necessary to discuss if it is practically applicable or not. Major advantage of nano is covering of space. We can see if you have a very big particle in some volume, there are very, very big Empty, uh, empty parts. If we will have uh, some micron, we can see there is even covering. If we have uh, some uh, nanoparticles, we have very dense covering of space with the same uh, uh, grams or with, with the same uh, uh, 
mass of particles. Therefore, that's very important because for plenty of application, we need to have uh, some space covering for some effects. And in case of micron and nano, we will have benefits with nano will be less grams necessary to have the same degree of covering in comparison with micron. Therefore, it is not so costly. It will be discussing, for example, according to electric conductivity, in case of microns, you should have a 10%, 15%, in nano, 1%. So we can see there is big difference between that only due to these mechanical, uh, mechanical reasons, uh, something being uh, nearby in uh, nano uh, world. And now, some, as I said, uh, myth. First is nano are stronger. It was starting, in fact, from nano tubes, because nano tubes 100% are very strong, and uh, uh, according to modulus, are the strongest uh, material appeared on the world, but in the nano scale, because nano tubes are nano. Therefore, if you will be joining nano, creating, for, for example, yarn from yarn, nano, there will be no breakage of nano, but between nano, <laughs> and that forces are very low. Therefore, we can see if you'll be using nano yarn, it, it will be not so very good because there are some friction forces and other forces, secondary forces, not so good. Therefore, individual nano, uh, nano tubes are very good, but joining them, it is not so good. And in some composites, for example, you can obtain uh, increase is practically 2-3%, therefore nothing. Therefore, we can see we should discuss precisely aim of applications or area of applications. Uh, in reality, as I said, if we will go according to modulus, we have some equation modulus depends on the bulk modulus and some between particles and between uh, atomic dimension. And we can see this graph, for example, for gold. Uh, it is some indicator of uh, these uh, all uh, cohesion forces. It is melting point, and we can see in nano we have melting point approximately uh, 500 or something like that. In bulk we have a uh, 1,000. Therefore, we can see one half of melting point, and that's typical for plenty of materials. Very good uh, properties from some point of view, but from point of cohesion, very low cohesion. Therefore, that's some reason why plenty of nano are not working efficiently, especially in some cases of uh, when we need something as load bearing and another kind of ones. Second is this relative surface area. As I said, standard definition is relative surface area as area per some gram. We created another one as a planar, therefore, uh, relative surface error per some micro uh, surface error. There are some little differ uh, big, bigger differences according to uh, porosity and, and thickness as well. And we can see both are interrelated. And what is interesting, if you will be multiplying that relative surface error standard or GSM, you will be obtained that new relative surface error. Therefore, very simple, only necessary to know GSM. And we can see here some differences. We created some micro uh, assembly and nano assembly. And we can see first was in micro assembly, it was 100 gram per meter square. In case of nano assembly, it was uh, uh, per uh, uh, 100 grams, 77 meter squares. Therefore, if you'll be using that, for example, for filtration, in case of nano, we will have a very low, uh, low mass. Therefore, it is, we will be divided into mass, mass is low, therefore, surface area will be very, very huge. Therefore, we can see, if we'll be comparing that, we have here some uh, calculations, and we can see, in case of this uh, relative surface area, from point of view of standard definition, in case of micron is 120 in uh, case of no, no. yeah uh, one, 120 S, SR is 16 and opposite SR therefore SR is standard standard in nano uh, is uh, 2000 and here is 1000 or 1020 therefore we can see from standard definition is that uh, uh, lowest row it appears nano is best. If you'll be uh, using the surface area, we, we, ob we obtain quite different situation. Micro is better. 
Therefore, in real uh, dimensions, the, that micro is better. Therefore, necessary to say, it will be good to discuss precisely what we need if we need to discuss something as a per gram or per some area.